35 miles southeast of Baton Rouge, on the banks of the mighty Mississippi, sits Convent, Louisiana, a town in the heart of plantation country. There are hundreds of, of plantations that were located up and down the Mississippi River between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Many of those properties now have industrial facilities located on them. Among them, refineries belonging to Shell Oil Company. In the midst of sugarcane fields sits Shell's Convent Refinery on 4,400 acres of land. It is here that preliminary plans for a new facility were suddenly halted. We had no idea what they discovered or what work had been done until after the project was canceled. Shell received an archeological report that revealed a grisly discovery, an unmarked graveyard containing the bodies of more than a thousand slaves. Word traveled fast. If there were so many plantations, where are all of the graves of the people who died, lived, and worked here. Kathy Hambrick, founder of the River Road African American Museum, was about to find out. One of the archaeologists, Dave Port, came to see me, and he told me about the discovery of the cemeteries that were here in the sugarcane fields just adjacent to Tezcuco. Tezcuco, a magnificent plantation that once stood proudly on the East River Road of the Mississippi. Destroyed by fire in 2002, the ruins sit on Shell's property in the shadow of the refinery and those sugarcane fields, now giving up secrets held for more than a hundred years. Not one, but two unmarked cemeteries, eternal resting places for some 1,400 slaves. Finding out you have a cemetery that you can't do anything with could be a real monkey wrench in your plans. You can understand why they may not be excited by that. In Shell's case, they just took responsibility for it. Upon discovery, Shell made the decision to not only mark the hallowed ground, but to memorialize it. The first step in reconciling the plantation's past. The slaves had been packed into shallow graves, one against the other. When we began probing, we found that there was another layer underneath them. In some cases, it seemed like there was a third layer. Most likely so the plantation owner wouldn't have to use more land. About half a mile away at the other cemetery, the bodies appeared to be buried in a more traditional manner. Unlike Monroe, there are no trees there. It is literally a sugarcane field. And, and you can stand there and you have no clue that it's any different than anywhere else out there. But now that we know, we can never forget. We are here today to unveil the Rooley and Monroe cemeteries. This is the day where we're gonna pay them respect and give them the right of human dignity that they did not enjoy during their living times. There was one headstone that was found here, and the name on that headstone was M.K. Mitchell. If you knew that your ancestor lived on this plantation before or after the Civil War, and they died, there's a good chance that they're buried there. And this affords them the opportunity to go visit their ancestors. It was a pretty natural decision that something needed to be done to protect, to preserve, and to bring some respect to the people who are interred. This is a discovery about the memory of our pain as a country, and we owe it to the people who are buried in all of the unmarked burial grounds of former plantations to create a place in their memory where we can all come together and heal ourselves from this pain.